The Shadows of Paris Written by Cyprian Jossen, Romance Audiobook, Chapter 5, The Letter In a small room on Rue Parmentier, Okia Kike sat lost in thought, trying to make sense of how Paris had turned him into a vulnerable man. He noticed Ifeoma's behavior mirroring that of feminists, contrary to how she behaved in Nigeria when she was with him. Life's unexpected twists had thrown him into the shadows and illusions of the strange polyamorous relationship that she tried to impose on him and Guillaume. At times, in the journey of life, people you meet on your way change to monsters, he whispered. His past, deeply rooted in the traditions of his Nigerian home, clashed with the reality of an unconventional love in the bustling city of Paris. Once accustomed to the simple life in his rural village, Okiakike now found himself in a strange world surrounded by people engrossed in their smartphones. Okiakike, who once followed in his father's footsteps as a messenger between the living and the spirits, now stood at the crossroads of rational minds in Paris. In his solitude, he pondered how his magical power could have helped him to obtain his papers. As he grappled with his identity as a black man in Paris, he found himself questioning the choices that brought him to a city where he was often referred to as Le Noir or the Black Man. In Nigeria, his identity was firmly rooted in being an Igbo man, and the label of African or Black was a new experience in the French capital. The cultural shock in Paris, mixed with the bureaucratic challenge of needing immigration papers to stay in France, left him in a state of uncertainty, awaiting a response from the asylum office. One morning, Mademoiselle Alice, the concierge, knocked on his door with a registered letter from the asylum office. With a mix of anticipation and anxiety, Okia Kike opened the white envelope, preparing to read the contents that held the key to his future in France. Closing his eyes briefly, he then opened them, finding the words on the paper appearing blurred, each line carrying the weight of his destiny in a foreign land. Subject, Asylum Application Decision Dear Mr. Okia Kike, I hope this letter finds you well. We would like to inform you that a decision has been reached regarding your asylum application submitted to the asylum office in Paris. After careful consideration of your case, we regret to inform you that your application has been denied, and you are not granted the status of a refugee in France. The decision is based on a thorough examination of the information provided, as well as the current conditions in your country of origin. Following this decision, you are given a period of 30 days from the date of this letter to leave the French territory. We understand that this news may be disheartening, and we appreciate the challenges you may face. If you have any questions or concerns regarding the decision, you have the right to seek legal advice. The enclosed document outlines your rights, including the possibility of appealing this decision. We sincerely wish you the best in your future endeavors, and we hope that you find a resolution to your situation. Yours sincerely, Paul LaCroix. Director de la Commission, Asylum Office Paris. Faced with the news that he couldn't stay in Paris anymore, Okia Kike considered going back to Nigeria before the 30 days were up. It was a tough decision because it meant leaving the life he had built in Paris. Paris used to be a place of hope, but it had started to feel like a problem. People there saw him as Lenoir, which meant the black man. It was like being in a cage. Going back to Nigeria, where he was from, started to sound like a good idea. It meant leaving behind what he had worked hard for in Paris, but it also meant escaping the problems of being a black man in a foreign place. This choice would let him be with his family again, share the story of his struggles, and find comfort in the community he knew. As he boarded his flight, paid for by the asylum office, heading back to Nigeria, he reminisced about life in Paris compared to the stories he had heard about the city before experiencing it. It had been a tough and stressful life in a lawful society, unlike Nigeria, where you could bribe the police. However, in Paris, Nigerians were not to be trusted in the city. The city changed, but the people didn't change their habits. They competed with each other, harbored jealousy, and had a way of twisting facts to win arguments. Okia Kike planned to advise his friends, who considered the journey to France to be wary of these diaspora brothers and sisters. He intended to tell them to make friends with the French people, who would show sincerity if they liked them. According to him, embracing the culture and speaking better French would be more achievable with the French themselves. Okia Kike aimed to dispel the notion some Nigerians in Paris propagated, 
misleading people at home by painting the city as a paradise. In reality, it was a place where one would work tirelessly from day to night. There was an announcement on the plane. Great passengers, we are now beginning our descent into Murtala Muhammad International Airport in Lagos. The weather in Lagos is clear, with a temperature of approximately 28 degrees Celsius. Please ensure your seatbelts are securely fastened, your tray tables are stowed, and your seatbacks are in an upright position. The local time is 4.30 p.m., and we anticipate touching down in approximately 20 minutes. As we approach Lagos, we kindly ask you to return your seat to its upright position and ensure all electronic devices are switched off. Our crew will be coming through the cabin for a final safety check, and we appreciate your cooperation. Thank you for flying with Curious Airline, and we hope you have a pleasant stay in Lagos or safe onward travels. When he checked out of the airport, he called Ifioma, but when she saw his call, she did not pick it up. She had decided to move on without him and stay with Guillaume, the man of her life. The infatuation had left her, and with the help of her friend Marie de Ries, she rediscovered who Ifioma was. The real Ifioma, not distracted, focused, and ready to put behind her the shadows of Paris in the spirit of Okiakike and enjoy the sweet nectars of life. It's just like the pawns in a chess game, at times, you must sacrifice some of them to win, take the king, and land your opponent on game over. Okiakike moved out of the airport, where his uncle was waiting to take him home. Uncle Nambi had advised him to return home after receiving the letter from the asylum office. With the 3,000 euros given to him by the asylum office as his right, he could set up a small business in Awari, their hometown. Ani Ijno, traveler, you are welcome, uncle greeted him. Okiakike entered the black Peugeot car and they drove off to the main road, where cars moved like snails, due to the traffic jam, locally called, Go Slow. Nothing had changed in Lagos, 